Good afternoon, everyone. These are signed juvenile court. The purpose of today's hearings is first of all to determine any child who's been recently detained and brought to the juvenile detention center to make a determination of whether probable cause exists to believe that they have engaged in delinquent conduct. Though it's just not a trial. And so the law allows me to make that determination of whether or not probable cause exists to believe the child engaged in delinquent conduct solely on the basis of hearsay through the uh, written police report submitted to the juvenile probation department and then forwarded to me. Again, this is not a trial. If you have information about your child's detention or about the underlying offense, I encourage you to share that information with your child's attorney. After I make the determination of whether or not probable cause exists to believe that the child engaged in delinquent conduct, if I do so, fine. Then I will continue on to determine whether the child should remain in detention or be released to a parent or guardian. The law dict dictates that I consider five statutory factors, and I will do that during that subsequent decision if it is necessary. <clears throat> For those children who have already been determined to have engaged in delinquent conduct or uh, for whom probable cause exists to believe that they've engaged in delinquent conduct, I will skip strictly to that second stage, looking at their detention level while they've been back there, and again, the underlying offense, and again, some additional information provided by the probation department to determine whether the child should continue to be detained or released to a parent or guardian. To all the children today, I remind you that you have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. You also each have the right to an attorney, and I've appointed an attorney to represent each of you. Before you speak to the court, I encourage you to first discuss what you want to say to the court with your attorney. That way he or she can advise you on whether or not you really should say it, and then speak on your behalf. First case we have this morning or this afternoon uh, is Aldo Artimo Solis Caldillo. Mr. Adler. Yes, sir. I'll also remind all the kids today anything you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at a future hearing. However, 
We do have a prosecutor in the room. The prosecutor is taking notes, and anything you say might lead the prosecutor to find additional evidence about you that could be used against you in a future period. All right? Mr. Zabak, what brings this young man to court? He was placed on deferred prosecution March 10th, and uh, he was placed on the monitor and with the sweat patch. He started he was doing very well. He was released from detention. He was doing very well. And then up to about maybe a month ago or so, things started getting a little worse. The school's not that good. He's been missing classes, coming home late. And uh, from home, coming home late, his mom would want him to come home and he would come home after those times, sometimes quite late. How late is quite late? Like midnight or even like 1.30. Mr. Zivak. And then, um, so we held an administrative hearing and he also hadn't been doing chores in the home. We held an administrative hearing about two weeks ago and he was given a curfew and some chores to do around the house. He's been participating in, he started doing better participating in outpatient treatment at the campus and, uh, and he's been testing positive for THC. And they're recommending residential and have a bed open on the 23rd. And we were hoping that between now and then that he could be placed on the monitor because he's done so well on the monitor in the past, just to get him to focus on what's going on. And uh, he was recently um, assigned a family preservation counselor about two weeks ago. And um, Al Aldo has, has, not to me, but to Mr. Sawyer, has stated several times that he really wants to try to change things. But he's just having a hard time. Mr. Adler, what are your thoughts? Uh, Judge, I would agree with the electronic monitor. Can I ask him all some questions? See, sir. Okay. Can you look at the voice in here? Um, I asked her if she understood. Okay. Que se desea de usted hoy? Pues yo lo que se decide está bien. Yo estoy cansada de lidiar con esos problemas. Me siento frustrada. Lo quiero ayudar, pero no sé cómo. I asked her. Did you understand, Judge? Yes, sir. Pero hoy, okay. ¿está bien usted que venga a su casa, su hijo, con el monitor electrónico? Está bien. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Okay. Although, honestly, it's my understanding we've had not one but two positive <coughs> UAs. If it weren't for the recommendation of your mom and Mr. Zobat combined, you'd be headed to detention today. You understand that? Yes, sir. I'm going to authorize uh, your release today on the electronic monitor. However, one more positive UA, you and I are done, and you're going to detention. Do you understand? If you cut the monitor off, if you skip going to treatment, you're going to be in detention. And the reason for that is I'm going to help you dry out one way or another. Okay? You can either do that through TRC or you can do that in detention. <clears throat> and while you're in detention, I can make sure you go to school. So you can either enjoy the summer and go through treatment or you can be in detention. Which sounds better? Be the order of the court. Thank you. All right, Mr. Bibbs. <laughs> Jennings, 
what brings Mr. Bibbs to court today? No, no, Mr. Bibbs appeared before you on March 24th of this year. He's adjudicated delinquent for both of the building and the invasion of the vehicle. At that time, he placed him on probation for um, one year. He had a number of uh, generators trying to work those that have the water on. And so far, the court was submitted to dealing with the creation. It was uh, on March, I'm um, sorry, on May 5th. Mr. Bibbs picked up Mardi Gras and left him home. He was located um, last night in the location of the school, right inside the detention facility, and he's been put in foster care. Does he have a parent guardianship today? Yes, Your Honor. The uh, mother is here and the father is also here. All right. Where's Dad? Where's Dad? Where's your son been? Out of the way, you know. Okay, where's mom? Mm -hmm. Where's your son been? At his friend's house. I just picked him up on Saturday. Okay, so in all of that time that you knew that he was at his friend's house, why didn't you give that information to Mr. Jennings? Because I didn't know he was at his friend's house. I, I, I have to that, locate I him. I find that a little difficult to believe. If I'm you knew on good. Saturday, as, even as recently as Saturday, that he was at his friend's house, did you pick up the phone and tell Mr. Jennings? I didn't have none of his information at all. Yeah, none yeah, of his, his information. Uh, the father and the mother are not together. I do not have the mother in contact with Jennings. And the father, and the father nor the brother who is an adult is kind of at his father's home. Neither one of them I have had any contact with Jennings. Okay. Mr. Bibbs, you have been adjudicated delinquent who me? Yes, ma'am. No, because I didn't even know he was even gone. Dad, did you file a missing persons report? No, sir. All right, Mr. Bibbs. Uh, Mr. Adler, where are your dogs? I don't know what to say to you, Mr. Bibbs. You sat there. And you asked me to give you probation. I granted you probation, granted your release on the electronic monitor, and I guess that was all just a lie. So you're detained. Thank you, sir. I find that if I would allow you to leave, you would be you would gone from the jurisdiction of the court. Maurice Hassan Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson, um, Ms. Taylor is going to be here today, so I'm going to appoint Mr. Adler to be your attorney for purposes of this hearing, okay? And after this hearing, he'll get Ms. Taylor, your attorney, and anything that happens to that, he'll let her know what happened, okay? So you'll be able to follow up with her. What brings Mr. Johnson to court today? Talk about just a little bit, please. Yes. He was referred in custody yesterday by the Fort Worth Police Department on a DCA that was issued earlier in the day. Um, I have issued a possible part of report to Judge Terry um, after a phone call that I had with Maurice yesterday morning, just about noonish. Um, Maurice and I were talking on the phone, and he and his mother were starting to engage in a verbal confrontation and which led to a physical altercation and while, you can hear all while that stuff on the phone. So um, based on that part of support, mom has reported also that he wasn't lucky enough to school even though he has um, at will his motorcycle to rent or his curfew or anything like that. Just based on all the non-compliance and physical altercations in the home, um, the DCA was issued yesterday by Judge Terry. He does have, um, well, I'm sorry, 
Committee. Um, for the record, of course, Chair Warren is the man who's the sentiment today, and he is also pretending that he's going to be responding to the family um, of the last month that happened on the Native Fair and the Native Fair that was held on May of the last month. So he's still pretending to be there. Does he have a parent guardian for today? No, 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 he doesn't. She was, mom was notified, but no, she's not here. Mr. Adler, what are your thoughts? Just I noticed there's an open CPS case, and I'm just wondering if there's another court that had a temporary managing conservatorship over this issue. All the way to the Colorado Division of CPS, and Level one zero, maintain it, and Judge Kim will use that and to whether or not he'll consider whether or not you should be released. Here's another reason why you can only get to level one zero. You want your mom to be part of it. It's going to take you working on that relationship with her in a positive manner. Judge Kim's not going to be comfortable releasing you to her. Unless you're level one, though, and unless mom says she's seen a change in your relationship. So while you're back there, work on getting to level one, though, that'll prove to Judge Kim and hopefully to your mom that you can follow the rules and that you do deserve a second chance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you, sir. other assaulted behavior in the home? She doesn't. She's never been in trouble before. This is her first time ever. Mr. Neal, what are your thoughts? Your Honor, I don't like that it was pre-planned and that it was premeditated. And um, I don't like that she plotted against the victim and then found the victim and then used some kind of unknown chemical which could have caused serious bodily injury had it been in her eyes. 
Thank you, sir. Hello again, I'm Rose, I'm a Florida Senator, and uh, I understand certainly the state's concerns considering this is just not only first referral, but for some being in trouble at all for some of her family members in their whole history. Um, she doesn't have a baby history. We, I do request that she be returned to her sister and she should be released today. Have you heard anything from the school about her being placed on ISS or even um, spelled? Yes, they said they were going to email me once um, the court and everything goes on, but they haven't um, emailed me yet. They said they were going to send her for now. But that's all I heard. Yeah. Jay just told me that her last name spells Jamie. Okay, so she's going to be. Is there any way for y'all to have online school for her at home? Yes. Okay. He's going to be at home supervising her. I am. Okay. Do you work from home? I do now. Yes. Okay. Um, any history of running away? No, not at all. Your Honor, if I may. If you do choose to release her, we ask that she be on electronic monitor and have absolutely no contact with the victim. Okay, I'm going to authorize a release, but I, I, until you prove me wrong, I'm not going to order the electronic monitor in this case because your sister tells me that you're doing. What happens at school is not what happens at home, and I trust your sister. However, no contact whatsoever with the victim, not on social media, not through friends, none of that, okay? Because um, if you do that, that could allow the state to bring additional felony charges against you. That's not what we want, all right? You don't want to make a bad situation worse. All right, I'm going to authorize a release to you, ma'am. Um, I want you to monitor what she does online. I want you to make sure she gets logged in in online school so that she finishes up the year correctly. All right? All right, that'll be the order for you. Christian Caleb Fuller. Raymond Daniel here. Mr. Fuller, Mr. Daniel can't be here, so I'm going to appoint Mr. Adler to be your attorney just for purposes of this hearing, okay? Oh, and with respect to the last term, I didn't say, but I do find it probably cause this belief that she was dead. She's been in trauma, but I'm going to authorize her release. <coughs> All right. Mr. Fuller, this is a 10 day hearing. You heard me earlier tell you what that meant. Ms. Blair? What brings Mr. Fuller to court today? Um, Your Honor, he was brought in for a drug trafficking um, that was issued by Judge Chen on July 28th, 2021. An electronic monitor removal and on April 24th, uh, he contacted um, on his treating advisor. There was a complaint issue on him and he wanted to turn himself in. It was after he was at his home and was reported in custody uh, without any incident. Um, he is currently pending a baby arrest for the card number of the card abuse. Aggravated robbery and criminal trespass number four. Um, he is scheduled for a determined hearing on June 15th at 8 30 with Judge Chen. He's currently on a level one outstanding sentence of uh, June 5th or September 10th. And aggravated robbery, is that involved in the weapon? Yes, um, he is allegedly the marker with the gun. Okay. Okay. in detention. Did you ever get down to level three zero? Or level three at all? The last time he was in detention, I believe he stayed on level um, one after the 
So on September 1st, he wasn't level three. Do not have that. Correct. On the basis of the DTA, Judge Kim's his cutoff was a moment ago. Yep. Mr. Adler. Judge, do you mind if I ask Mr. Blair some questions for a preparing here? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Judge. So, Ms. Blair, you turned himself in yep. approximately two months ago. Yep. And is the June 15th hearing the, the first setting of status then, or is it a full blown certification? Um, except for a trial at the end. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have you been level one pretty much the entire time since you've been back? Yes. Yeah, so, um, he got on level one on April 25th. Um, he had a new point on April 19th, um, and then he got right back on uh, level one outstanding the very next day. And then the most recent one, he, uh, he was level one acceptable on June 4th for uh, uh, not following instructions. And does he live with his mom or his dad? He lives with his mom. And do you have constant or consistent contact with his mom? And do you think she can care at the next? Does she want him to go home ten days or so? Um, I did ask her to stay, and she said she wanted to be home, and she could see him right after she gets off work, which is after six p.m. Thank you, Judge. Judge asked that he be released to his mom, but it was not asked the court's permission for uh, Mr. Angle. He said in another detention hearing where the mom can be present for court the next fourteen days. Okay. Um, I don't feel comfortable. Um, given that you put this very, very serious allegation underlying um, a weapons offense, really low situation, so it makes me pause. <clears throat> also, add on to that, Judge Kim previously released you and kept your mom in trial. Those two things had to tap the brakes a little, but Mr. Adler's right. Um, keep maintaining level 1 0, and the next time it's going to make it really hard to say no. Mr. Daniel always has the right, if you're doing really well, to come and ask Judge Kim for an earlier hearing in two weeks from now. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. But for today, I'm going to order you to be detained. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Diana Gargar. Gargara, this is a 10-day detention hearing to determine if you should remain and sit up straight. Thank you. I expect you to act like a lady in court. This is a 10-day detention hearing to determine whether you should be released to a parent or guardian or be ordered to remain in detention. The court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in illegal conduct. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say this hearing cannot be used at a future hearing against you. But we have a prosecutor sitting right over there who's taking notes, and it may lead him to information that he might be able to use against you. You have the right to an attorney, and your attorney, Mr. Hall, is here. Your level three confined. Your starting fights with six other girls in the back yesterday. Yeah, I, yeah, I know what's going on. Um, so, as for today, based on that evidence alone, I find that if I were to release you today, you would be a danger to the public and or yourself. So for that reason, I will not release you today. I strongly suggest that you start working toward maintaining level 1-0. Because if you don't, you can create a very difficult situation for yourself. You understand? All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Judge. Good luck, Mr. Hall. <laughs> Thank you, Judge.
right, Nathan Knox. Mr. Sherman, do you have a question? Okay. Mr. Knox, Mr. Sherman, can you be here so I can appoint Mr. Adler to the motion? Mr. Spence, what brings Mr. Knox to court today? No, this is a 10 day hearing. On 5 14 21, he left home from school but did not attend. He didn't return home from 5 16 21 and came home and just changed clothes and left. Uh, mother told him he needed to be in by 8 o'clock that evening. Uh, she called him in as a runaway uh, PTA was issued on 5 21. He returned home on 21st and we should share. Oh, I'm thinking about that. Does he have a parent guardian? Yes. Are you mom? Yes, sir. All right. We'll both call it. Uh, Mr. Deal, what are your thoughts? He's been level one up since May 26th. Mr. Neal? Your Honor, the state's position is that if you choose to release him, we ask that he have an electronic monitor so that we know where he is and that he uh, hopefully stays home. Your Honor, but I don't. I did not call in. I can look it up. Please do. Your Honor, I handled that original case. There was, I believe, three guns still missing when we finished. I gave all that information. He wasn't able to be released until he gave the information to me, which I could provide to the detective working in. Uh, the information was given to the detective. That this information of the case was being transferred. So we would not have any follow-up if they were recovered. But he gave the information where the guns went, who they went to, where they could have ended up. Okay. Who else lives in the house with your mom? Uh, myself, I have an 18-year-old daughter, a 14-year-old daughter, a 17-year-old son, and Nathan. What are your other kids like? They're great. My oldest daughter just graduated last week. She works two jobs. Um, my youngest daughter is act, plays club volleyball and is just active in school. And um, Jackson, uh, the 17 year old, he had a little speed bump, but he's. What does that mean? He, he, he's in the file. <laughs> okay. um, uh, but he's. He's doing really well as far as, uh, you know, dealing with his responsibilities regarding his uh, activity in the situation. What's Jackson's last name? Minute. He was an adult at the time. Oh, he didn't come to the juvenile. Okay. No, he, he was only 16 at the time. Oh, did he come to the juvenile? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. yes. Can you spell that last name? M I N N I X. hours of community services Jackson finished he, he hasn't finished any he's currently looking for a job so he has 60 hours to mm -hmm. so. Mr. Spence is it normal for a kid who's been on probation for 
test it for six weeks to have done no community service yet? Is that unusual? No, not really. We would hope, we, we would hope they would be doing something. But it does happen. And, and what under what circumstances does it happen? Just getting the kid off the sites and stuff like that. Okay. When he was finishing up school. But he doesn't have a job yet? Not yet. What extra, We've what, gone to, what extracurricular activities does Jeff Jackson have in school? Not none right now. Or okay, so none he's got yet. lots of free time. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm headed with this? Yeah, yes, sir. Let's start knocking the 60 hours out. You know where he's getting the marijuana? Nathan? I have no, I have no idea. There's a whole little pod of people in Azel, I'm sure that he gets them from gets it from. Ma'am, are you employed? I am. So if Judge sends him home on the electronic monitor, what type of supervision would you have for him? Um, while I'm at work, he would have to be self-reliant. I mean, my daughter is 18, she's an adult, but he's... You know, do you trust him to go home today on the electronic monitor? I do. Is that what you were asking Judge Porter to do today? Yes, Your Honor. I want you to get with uh, the detective who's working on this case, yes. as indicated by Mr. Kroll. Get the information provided by Mr. Knox to the detective, to Mr. Kroll. Doesn't pan out. It turns out that Mr. Knox has misled Mr. Crawl. I'm going to give you the freedom to uh, get with Mr. Crawl and Mr. Spence and approach the court with a progress report, at which time I'll consider whether or not you need to come back or lying. But if you've been truthful, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. Um, I'm going to authorize your release on the electronic monitor. You're basically on house arrest. You're not leaving. You cut that monitor off. You have friends bring you drugs to your house and you use them, even if it's fake him. I'll find out about it because I want him released on the sweat patch as well. Uh, we're going to know if you're using drugs, you're leaving the house. If you do the one, you'll be back here. Information provided by Mr. Crawl doesn't pan out. Turns out you can slam Mr. Crawl. We'll be back. All right. Do I need to be worried? All right. That'll be the order for you. Thank you, Mr. Spence. Talked to Mr. Reed about this case. 
Is it scheduled for court before me tomorrow? We have a weekend worked out, I believe. Okay. Is that your understanding, Mr. Adler? Not your understanding. Okay. Um, without telling me anything about that. Um, he's been, he got to level one out today. His previous dip was the person at staff. Renewed them. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, of all the things you can control, your mouth is the biggest thing. And he had very honest thoughts about that. Yeah. Really? Because otherwise you'd be great in that. Like, really, really great. Um, and I can understand the do not associate with the other kid that was involved in it. I know that kid, so I'm not holding that against you. Okay. I, I think I know what happened in that situation. That's why I'm not holding it against you. But the profanity, I gotta hold it against you, right? Um talk to me, Mr. Adam. Well, Judge, uh, if you accept the plea deal, it, it can be probation long. Okay. So I would ask that he be released today and come back tomorrow with his mom. And then uh, we will be from tomorrow morning. Mom, um, talk to me. You going to make sure he comes back tomorrow? Yes, sir. I already took off work. <laughs> Who's going to watch you tonight if I let you go home? Well, I'll be home tonight. Um, I'm off work today. Took off yesterday. While I'm at work during the day, my boyfriend works at night. So he'll have supervision morning and night. All right. <laughs> Can you keep the monitor on and obey mom for just 24 hours to see me tomorrow morning? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. With the monitor, though, I'll see you tomorrow. Now, whether or not, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Alexander, what is the reason for Voto? Um, the search in there, she violated allegedly, allegedly violated her probation. Uh, there's two parts of it. She unsuccessfully discharged from placement. Was, uh, was it Monarch Academy? Okay. Remember, we said like Grand Prairie, we have three dudes in there. So she was unsuccessfully discharged from Monarch Academy and she ran from the facility. Mr. Shaw. She's on level one, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, her mom's here, right? Are you, are you wanting her to come home today with your mom? I don't want her to come home. Are you able to bring her back whenever the case is set for court? Are you going to be able to adequately supervise her? I, uh, I do work from home. However, I, I work for the Department of Family Protective Services, so I'm often on the road. Okay, would there be an adult in the home? No. No. And are you currently away from the home frequently? Yes. Ninety percent of my work requires me to drive. Okay, well then if you she was on a monitor, would you think that that would be a solution to that issue or not? Well, let me ask you this question. She, she ran away from the treatment facility. Uh, has she ever run away from your home before? No. Yes. 
Would you, but do you think at this time though, since she's been gone for such a long time that she'd stay put? Are you asking the court to uh, let her come home with you today? That's, that's what I have. All right. You know what I gotta do, right? Normally after a kid goes to Lake Granbury, the next step is TGD. But Mr. Shahan, Mr. Alexander will find the Monarch, which is actually less restrictive than Lake Granbury. In your history, by the way, I'm personally familiar with the Monarch. I, I can, you know that. You know that. And I am really proud of you for maintaining Level 1 Oak because I know the group of girls that are back there right now. And some of them are a little hard to get along with, to put it nicely. The fact that you're level 1-0 speaks volumes about the self-restraint that you're starting to show, which is a really, really good thing, all right? Because that's not easy with that group of girls back there, all right? So I, I mentioned that because I want you to know I am noticing all the good things that you are doing, and I'm proud of you for all those good things that you are doing. And they do mean a lot, and I will take that into consideration, all right? Um, but there's a lot, of, a lot of bad stuff on the other hand, too, that I can't totally disregard. Does that make sense? But I do want to give you props for the good things that you are doing. And I want to encourage you to keep doing that. The door's not shut, all right? But I can't open it today. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Stearns, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? What brings Mr. Stern's support today? Yes, Judge. He said it in a call from Harvey Holly Injury on 424-21. Um, the police was dispatched to court behavior help. It seems that he has pulled a staff member there. He punched the staff in the arms about five times. Um, he does have a petition pending. We have an evaluation that's going to be done this weekend. And then court set for the 24th or 25th of this month. And he also has a petition um, pending in Arizona. He's a resident of Arizona. Is he the parent guardian for the day? No, sir. Because they're in the same place. Okay. But they, they, they oh, do sorry. stay in conversation with me. Uh, Your Honor, uh, John is on level one outstanding. He would like to be released to his dad. I know his dad has provided a statement, which is in. Uh, Ms. Guerrero's detention hearing report. Um, he's aware that he's got a psychological evaluation uh, that's coming up shortly, but he, you know, he would like to be released to his dad. Okay. And he is level 1 of, correct? He has been since the 7th. Okay. So this is day three. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and order that you, he, 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 he makes it, that's okay. I'm going to order, go ahead and order that you remain detained today, all right? Is the hearing before me or Judge Terry next week? I don't know. I mean, here, let me check. I believe it's Judge Terry. Um, and, and the 
really the chief reason, there are two chief reasons um, why I'm going to order the two be the same day. One, I want you to uh, finish that evaluation this weekend. And then second, I really would like to be able to talk to your dad in person before I authorize your release. Um, because you'll notice I talked to most of the parents today, and that gives them opportunity for them to tell me what's going on at home and for me to ask them questions about what's going on at home too. So it's kind of a two-way communication. Um, the judge, you'll see Judge Terry next week. And between now and then, I want you to maintain level 1-0 because that'll factor into her decision next week, okay? And you want to put yourself in the best possible position for her. Does that make sense? Thank you, sir. Thank you. The law says when the children are above 14, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. In the Texas Constitution, there's a provision called the Open Courts section of the Texas Constitution. It says the court should be open and free to the public. However, there's a provision of the Family Code that says uh, when the child involved is under the age of 14, then there exists a presumption that a child under the age of 14 has a greater right to privacy than the public's right to participate in the hearing. The remaining hearings today involve children under the age of 14. No evidence has been brought to the court's attention that the public's interest in participating in that subsequent hearing outweighs uh, the child's right to privacy. And so if you are not connected with any of the remaining hearings, I'm going to ask you to leave right now if you're, uh, unless you're an officer of the court. All right. Don't bring him in yet. Yeah.